back again for another National Electrical Code code video. This one is part four of our service conductor calculations. Uh, this is going to be focusing on our grounded conductor. The last video, part three, was our ungrounded conductors. And as you can see here, I still have the numbers up from before. And that's the numbers we're going to be using today for our grounded conductor. So if you haven't seen part three yet, this isn't going to make a whole lot of sense. So I suggest if you haven't, pause it, go ahead and watch that one, and come back to this one. <clears throat> Excuse me, it'll make a whole lot more sense. Okay, so we're going to start out with a joke. This old boy heads to the liquor store to get himself some liquor. And he's riding his bicycle, and he gets there, and he buys himself this um, big bottle of Jim Bean. Gets back out to his bicycle, puts it in his basket, and gets ready to head home, and then thinks to himself, you know, if I fall down, this bottle's going to break all over the ground. So the solution, just drink it there. He drank the whole bottle right there. Jumped on his bike and went home. By the time he got home, he said to himself, Sure, I'm glad I drank that before I left. I fell down seven times. <laughs> There's your joke for today. Alright. So, again, we're talking about the neutral conductor, or the ground conductor, which of course is your neutral, uh, for your service. Um, and this is going to start, we're going to be in two, we're going to start at 220.61. It's going to be fairly similar to our grounded with just a little bit of adjustments, okay? Well, another thing to remember is since we were talking the neutral load, the only thing it carries back to the transformer is your unbalanced current. So we're not going to have to worry about any furnace at all, right? And like these, uh, the dryer and the range and stuff like that, which are two-phase with the neutral, that those only carry back the unbalance for those appliances, and so we're going to have to take part of that load, which we're going to talk about here in a minute. Alright, so if we look at 220.61, it says feeder or service neutral load. Okay, it says um, basic ca uh, calculation, the feeder or service um, neutral load should be the maximum unbalance of the load determined by this article. The maximum unbalanced load shall be the maximum net calculated load between the neutral conductor and any one ungrounded conductor. Okay, so basically meaning that uh, we're only going to use the line to neutral loads. Okay. Um, or, and the portions thereof that they um, are going to use because the only we only have to size that conductor, like I said, for the current it's going to carry back to the transformer, right? Not the total current used in the uh, house. All right. Um, now, uh, what that's saying, though, since we're using line to neutral loads, is that this general lighting load is totally line neutral, right? And so, what we have to do with our general lighting load, it's already calculated for us is we just move it across. So, 5,940. Okay, and that was done. So, it's, it's, that part's fairly simple. Now, when we look at uh, 220.60B here, permitted reductions, um, it says a service of feeders supplying the following loads shall be permitted to have an additional demand factor of 70% applied to the amount in B61, uh, B1 or portion of the amount in 220.62B2 determined by the following calculations. Okay, so uh, what that is saying is the, these below things here we can take it at 70% instead of 100, right? Now, if we look at number one, it says a feeder or service supplying household electric ranges, wall mounted ovens, counter mounted cooking units, um, and electric dryers, um, where you calculate the load based off of, let's see your table, uh, 220.55 for ranges and 220.54 for dryers. We can take those at 70%. So both of these two here, the dryer and the range, we can we can take this at 70% of what we calculated before. Okay? So if we take the dryer, uh, which is 6100 VAs times 0.7. We come up with 4,270 VAs. Okay, that's what our new dryer load is going to be. So, 4,270 over here. Okay, the range is also mentioned in there. So, our range we can do the same thing for. And it's based off this calculated load. So, 11,200. Take that times 
That gives us 7,840 VA. Okay? And that one goes up here. 7, 8, 4, 0. Okay. Um, now, if you read there on 2, underneath there, it says a portion of the unbalanced load in excess of 200 amperes, or the feeder service supplied by a 3 wire uh, DC or single phase AC system, or 4 wire 3 phase, or a 3 wire 2 phase system, or 5 wire 2 phase system. Okay, so what that is saying there is that um, for if we do our calculation here and we come up with over 200 amps here, Everything over 200 amps, we can take 70% of that and put it back in. That makes sense? So, real quick here, if we have, let's say 230 amps is what we calculated for our neutral load, which is a big neutral. We can take that load and subtract out the 200 to give us 30 amps. That 30 amps is what's over the 200, so we can take that 30 amps times 0.7. Grab my calculator. 30 times 0.7 gives us 21. 21 amps. So now we add our 200 back in, and we have a total of 221 amps. Is what we use size on our conductors for. Okay, um, obviously we're not going to have anywhere close to that, um, but just be aware that that's the other uh, condition. If you're above that 200, we can take it down. the The amount of amps above 200, we can take that down to 70 percent. Okay. All right. My dog uh, got hold of my eraser here. Okay, back to our calculation. Now, um, pretty much that's all the rules for the neutral, uh, the different rules. Uh, now, there are some things we're going to change once we get down here to the fastening place and large motor load, but it's not really different rules. As you can see here, it goes from range to fastening place, we skip the furnace. Again, like I said, the furnace is solely a two phase uh, line to line load, right? And so there's nothing to come back on the neutral. So we don't count that at all on our neutral conductor, okay? Um, so then we go ahead and we go to our fa uh, fasten in place appliances. Now, before, um, if you remember when we did our fasten in place um, for here, we had our water heater, our water pump, we had our uh, garbage disposal, and our dishwasher, right? We had four of them in that case. Now, a lot of times you have more than that. You may have um, a... Um, Range hood, microwave range hood, you have to add in. You may have um, a heat vent light in your bathroom. You may have a garage door opener. So you may have more than what we had. I just gave, uh, for that example, we only had four total, right? Um, the biggest thing to remember, it has to be over a quarter horse and um, or above 500 watts or we don't put it in, okay? That's new this year. All right, so um, counting only our... Um, 120 volt loads. Once we get to our largest, mo our fast in place appliances, that drops us down to two. Our garbage disposal or dishwasher, I mean, at seven amps. We take that times 120, and we get 840. And our garbage disposal, which was at eight amps, times. 120 equals, whoops, took it right, 960. Right, we total those up and we get 1800 VA. Okay, now if you remember back what it, when it talked about fast in place appliances, it said if we have four or more, we can reduce it to 75%. That's how we got to that number, right? But in this case here, that still applies to the neutral side as long as we have four or more. But since here we only have two, we have to use that 1800. We can't reduce it. That makes sense? Okay, so this number then just goes up here. No reductions. 
Okay. So the last thing then we have is our largest motor load, right? And so this time, however, last time we used our water pump because that was the biggest, right? Well, our water pump is not a 120 volt load, so we can't use that. We have to use the largest of our 120 volt loads. In this case here, it's our garbage disposal at 960 uh, VAs, right? So if we take our 960 times the 0.25 for the largest motor load, remember that it said, uh, I told you in our last video, this 0.25 is only the extra above the 100% because we already counted for the 100% of that motor, right? When we did this calculation here. Okay. So 960 times 0.25 is 240 VAs, right? That number is the largest motor load and that goes up here. Okay, and then that's all the numbers we gotta get for the neutral side, right? Uh, like I said, you may have more appliances in here and stuff like that. Um, if, you're, if you're gonna do your service load, it just gonna depend on what's in your house. But for the, uh, the example we gave when we did our, our ungrouted side, this is what we came up with, okay? So, let's go ahead and we add all these up. And we get 20,090 VA, right? And again, last time we, uh, we, talk, or we said that in order to get down the amperage, which we need to supply our, service, our conductor, we got to divide by the voltage, which is still going to be 240. Right, the voltage is still 240 at the house. Okay, and that will give us 83.71 amps. Okay, so now from there, we need to go to three, table 310.16 to size our conductors based off that, right? So go ahead and turn to 310.16. In 310.16, like we said in the last video, since our uh, service uh, equipment basically is going to be ranked, rated at 75 degrees C, the terminals most likely, and as long as our installation on our conductors is rated at least 75 degrees C, we can use that column to size these. Okay, so if you fall down your 75 degrees C column, look for the next one bigger than 83.71, you're going to find 85, which is good for 4 gauge. Okay, so four, four gauge conductors will work for this service. Now you can tell it's quite a bit lower or smaller than our, our two watt uh, conductors that we use for our ungrounded. You can see here we had three watt uh, that we calculated and that's based off of table 310.16 centimeter degree C column in the last video. But we also talked about how table 310.12 tells us that we can actually reduce to 83%, which puts it down to a 2 watt, right? 2 watts is a lot bigger than 4 gauge, but we got to remember the neutral is only carrying the unbalanced load, which is a lot less, especially with these bigger appliances, than um, the ungrounded conductors, okay? Now, 83.71 and 85 in the chart here, that's very, very close, right? So for me, and we as electricians, if you remember, we as, we as electricians need to plan for future expansion all the time, right? And so knowing that all this adds up here to 83.71, currently what they have in the house, most likely they're going to add stuff. Well, this basically gives us, what, 1.29 amps um, until we hit that 85 threshold. So for me, if it's me, I'm going to go ahead and size up to the next one, which gives me up to 100 amps back on my neutral, and that's going to be a 3 gauge. Okay, I'm going to put an or on here. The correct answer is, based off what we calculated, is technically that, right? That's correct, um, because we did all of our math. But again, future expansion tells me I should probably put a 3 gauge in, just to make sure. Now, if we would have been at like, oh, uh, let's say 75 maybe, 71 maybe, then I would have possibly used that. But being that we're, all, we're less than 2 amps, from the next size conductor, I'm gonna go ahead and size up. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. I hope that you understand our, 
on ground and conductor side and now as well our ground and conductor side and like I said in, um, in the last video I believe this is much quicker once you get all these numbers this part here getting your original numbers is what takes the time much easier once we get here because then all we gotta do is do some changes okay all right I hope this video is helpful um, I will be doing a video on um, our grounding electrode conductors and our main bonding jumper sizes um, as well as our conduit sizing because a lot of times we're going to have our conduit for our service conductors we're going to have our service conductors in conduit underground out sometimes we direct burial right um, but we will also sometimes have them in conduit and so we'll, I'm going to do a video on sizing the grounding electrode conductors main bonding jumpers which is very simple and then on conduit fill for the uh, conductors as well so Hopefully, hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions, comments, um, go ahead and put them in the comment section below, and we'll see you on the next one.